organize or die. Mm. There it is. Mm. Yeah, you know, that's, um, it's funny, I was having a conversation with a Ghanaian brother at work today. And, you know, whenever we speak about black related issues, he always wants to focus on the problem. And I'm trying, nah. to, say, I'm trying to say to him, we know what the problems are. It's time we start talking about the solution. Yes. And he couldn't get it. He couldn't get past this moment. So when you just said that, it resonated with me in terms of we got a lot of work to do. Like we, yes. we really do. But the work starts here in the mind first. In the mind. Yes. There's a difference between, I don't know if you've noticed this, if you've noticed the difference between the black African, wherever they come from in the continent, the British black man and the American black man. I don't know if you've noticed the difference in mentality between the three. I, there are some, but overall, I, I think the mental condition of the African man globally, I think we have more in common, even in terms of our problems, mm. than we do differences. I think we're far more alike mm. in problem and in solution than we are different. So as I travel, what I find is black, the brothers and sisters tend to exaggerate how different they are from other groups of Africans. Mm. So like, even if I'm in the Caribbean, the Saint, the brother and sister in Saint Croix will, will try to get me to see how different it is from Jamaica. In Jamaica, they want me to see how different it is from Cuba. In Cuba, they want me to see, you know, even in America, you know, California, we're so different from the problems in my, or London is so different from Paris. And I'm like, I didn't been everywhere. It might look a little different. It might wear certain, a, a slightly different outfit. Mm. But at the end of the day, I see the consistent threads running through them all. So that doesn't mean we cannot engineer our, our solutions mm. to fit that particular group. We should. But I think we have to make sure we maintain consciousness of the international flavor that exists in all black issues because if we don't it's going to be hard to come together because everybody thinks they're so much different from the others so okay. to your point mm. i do see those minute differences but i see so much more in common beyond them if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah i mean i think when i listen to you i listen i listen to a lot of, a lot of your content and have been for some time and i think what resonates with me is the message of identity yeah because for me for me, that's yes. the biggest issue we have. And I think yes. once we are able to overcome yes. identity, the Chinese, yes. the Chinese man is yes. the Chinese man. The Japanese man is the Japanese man. That's right. We're, we're the only ones that are fragmented. We don't know who we are. We don't know who we are. And I, I believe once we understand fully, we can only be African. Yes, 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 yes we've been spread across the ground and nobody gonna let you be anything else either and that's the thing that gets me mm. because i can say i'm american all i want they're never going to treat me like an american in america mm. you can say you're british all you want you will never be treated like british in mm. britain you see so it's like why do you need to hold on to this exactly because this is superficial and imaginary it has no basis in reality nobody sees an american when they see me nobody sees a british mm. when they see you they see a black man black woman but because we're so thirsty for validation from the oppressor we don't want to give that part up because we think we might get something from it sooner or later mm. so we can't even fathom the possibility mm. of never being accepted that's what scares black people the fact that I may never be accepted by these Caucasians. Mm. You never will. Mm. But we don't want to admit it's crazy. it. So, yeah, that's, yeah. That, that, that's that. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. I'm going to run, y'all, but I want to thank y'all for tapping in. Thank you so October much. October 21st through the 27th is when I'll okay. be back With in the, the UK. Okay. okay, message me try. again, and I'm going to send you the flyer once All I right. have it. Thank, okay. thank you so much. Thank okay, you. brother and sister. Y'all be safe. Bye. All right, now. Bye. God bless yeah. you. Bye. All right.
who tapping in, who tapping in, who tapping in. My UK family, can't wait to see you next month. My UK, my Luton, Wolverhampton, Liverpool, Manchester, Birmingham, Bristol, London, Africans. Who tapping in? Coca Kyra going once. Coca Kyra going twice. Coca Kyra going three times. Where's Coca Kyra at? Okay. Oh. How, you, how you doing, Princess? Okay. Where you at in the world? So my name is Kaki Kara. I'm from Philly, though. Kaki Kara, you in Philly now? Yes. All right, Kaki Kara. What part of Philly? Um, I'm from South Philly. South Philly. What's on your mind, so Queen? So, uh, so I have a podcast. I've been to college. I've graduated. I work for a nonprofit. And like you said, we individually can't make as much of an impact as we want. I feel like it has to be community, but I think it starts with education. We are very ignorant, like as a whole, like even the people that know are still not, not knowing because, you know, like they say, Someone who thinks they know everything knows nothing. So I feel like, like I see a lot of people say homeschooling, but that wasn't really a solution because in COVID, everybody got left dead. So everybody, how can we put... Everybody was homeschooled and the parents couldn't deal with it and the children couldn't wait to get out them houses. Exactly. We can't put that burden on them. So we got to get our Black educators. That's why I'm loving the fact that you're going to build a school. I'm... I'm mm -hmm. I'm here for it. I can't wait to send my children there when I do have children because I don't have children. So I feel like this is my chance to put my all into my community because I don't have as much distractions as my counterparts, maybe. Yes, ma'am. So my question to you is, okay, since we're talking about solutions, my podcast, I have a segment where I say, what black and brown businesses have you supported? Why are you saying black and brown? Because like you said, we are so used to including everybody that has this skin because we are minorities and we think that we're stronger together than separate. But honestly, we need to focus on our community because like you said, it's never been a time where it was so just So why do you us. keep saying brown? Because that's something that I'm just now, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Understanding okay. why I talk to you i i see that and we want what's best for the brown but our priority has to be ourselves we want what's best for everybody but we want to get on the same page more than anything us black right. african americans right. africans people from african descent mm -hmm. so what i'm saying is that segment made us see how much the black dollar doesn't come you know what i'm saying back into our pockets it makes us see like mm -hmm. well dang why are we not supporting the same people that we want to see succeed you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I feel like even when we was fighting for women's rights, it was the white woman in the front and the black woman in the back. And that should yep. have been like that if we white yep. fighting for women's rights. You know what I'm saying? So we got to get our our organization together, but it can't be loud because we saw how that went. We saw how, how many cities were thriving and got burnt down or they, they put water over it and Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like a lot of people are intimidated because we are capable. I want everybody to stop oh, for thinking sure. that we are for not sure. capable. We are more than capable of doing it. But every time we do it, there's some type of negativity behind it. We had a Black Wall Street. You know what I'm saying? We've had things. So I'm tired of people trying to act like we can't do it because we can. It was designed so that it could slow us down. The credit scores just came in what? In the 70s? Mm -hmm. That was another thing implemented to slow us down yeah. so that we wouldn't Cre be on the, the same The whole day. credit system, the credit system was created to deny black people uh, resources. HO way was created to that if you could afford this house in this neighborhood, we need a, a, a housing authority that's going to tell you that mm, you don't quite fit our criteria. So me, I'm a housing counselor at a nonprofit organization and I'm trying to get my my black people my uh, my underprivileged people housing whether it's um transitional housing temporary housing i'm trying to get them to be homeowners you know mm -hmm. because i feel like us having land will be a great thing 
thing to start with. I feel like we need to build our own communities. I just graduated from construction school. I was in an apprenticeship. So I know how to mm -hmm. build a house from the ground up. I know how to do the rough work. I know how to do the finished work. I can drywall, tape, spackle. So I want to learn skills that I can pass down and not just my knowledge, because I'm learning that I went to school to, to uh, because they told us go to college and I'm making the same as somebody that's a high school graduate. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not designed, the, 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 the goal is going to move every time we get closer if we try to seek validation. Right, unless you have, have your own. Unless you have your own. So now that I have all of this in me, it's like, so how do I share this? That's why I started a podcast on YouTube so that our views could be, you know, uh, better, better explained or um, even just so people could see it because I am young. I'm 26. So it's like, what, what, so what's, how do we start? What, how do we start? Because I, I, I know some solutions, but I want to know how do we implement the solutions? Well, the number one Here's the thing. Solutions are not a mystery. The problem right. ain't the solution. The problem is organization Organiz is needed to implement the solution. Right. That's where the issue is. People say, what's the solutions? That's easy. Right. When you have a group of people who are willing to sacrifice time and mm -hmm. money, it's easy to fix your problems. Our issue is we don't have the psychological commitment. Black Agreed. folks don't want to the psychological commitment. You know, it's just like somebody who would rather work 50 years at a job instead of spend a couple years that, to build their own. That's, they and I'm have on the that psychological path. They would rather suffer the long term than to suffer the short term. And that's black people. That's we the would rather suffer the long term me. racism yes. than the short term struggle to create our own infrastructure. I agree with you a thousand percent. I am not buying into a program that's going to pay me out at 65. I want to spend my money before 65. I want to be retired and being able to have several different incomes. And so that's why I'm basically working at a nonprofit. I want to share as a housing counselor. I want to share that financial literacy. I want to share um, credit building. I want to share just doing workshops. I feel like that just is helping better with the community, the sense of community and sharing knowledge. I'm a community health major. So I'm very community oriented, even though I know like, I may have figured out a path. I'm trying to get my sisters and brothers on the same path. I got you. I got you. Thanks for checking in, good sister. Yes. Let's link soon. Yes. All right, mom. Be you blessed. too. Appreciate you. Yes, brothers and sisters, the FICO score was introduced in 1989. That's when America started moving towards this credit system. And the purpose of the FICO score, the credit system, the credit score was to deny black people opportunity. What did I tell you? IQ testing to deny black children opportunity. Law school testing, grad school testing, all testing is designed to deny black people opportunity. And when you start scoring higher, they will change the goalposts. Let black people fix their credit up. Listen to me. Let black people fix their credit up. Let's say everybody black has fixed their credit and we now have the highest credit scores in the country. Guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna introduce a new variable. They're gonna introduce a new criteria they're going to introduce a new scale. They're going to introduce a new factor to make sure you don't get the opportunity. It's the system. This is why we say vote for what? It's the system. This is why we say vote for what? You keep on trying to win in the system when the system gives us the right to build our own systems. Yeah, we can't have our own criminal justice system, but we can have our own school system. When are we going to create our own systems? We're too lazy, too self-hating, too religiously immature to work together together and build our own. It ain't about dismantling his system. 
That is not where your effort needs to be. Stop focusing on destruction and start focusing on construction. Stop focusing on destruction and start focusing on construction stop focusing on destruction and start focusing on construction it ain't about tearing down his system that's reactionary stop being reactionary be proactionary tearing down his system does not educate your kids tearing down his system does not feed your family tearing down his system does not eliminate white jesus it is not about tearing down what he has. It's about building what we need. Stop being so destructive. We always wanna tear something down. That's anger, anger and rage. We need love and commitment. Anger and rage tears down. Love and commitment will build. Anger and rage tears down. Love and commitment will build. Who tapping in? I'm going to do two more tap-ins and then I got to run. Two more tap-ins. Source of Knowledge Bookstore, Newark, New Jersey, 867 Broad Street, Sunday, September the 15th, 12 to 6. Dr. Umar speaks at two. Who's tapping in? Managed by Asada, where you at? Managed by Asada, where you at? Tap in, tap in, and tap in. I got to see you in order for us to talk. Broken. Broken. I got my phone in water. You yeah, my phone. Camera is water. broken. You got your uh, phone right in water. Where you based that good system? Uh, California, but I'm originally from Cameroon. You from Cameroon. Okay, because no, no, you no, said, no, I thought you was a Latino black, sister for that. a minute there. Balsamic black. I was in Cameroon one year ago in September. Black. I was in Cameroon. Understood. Sure. Talk to me, sister. Let me ask you a question. The, the relationship between immigrant Africans and American Africans in the United States. What is your opinion on the relationship? A lot of American Africans say that when the immigrant African brothers and sisters come here, they can be rude, dismissive, arrogant, yeah. condescending, and some immigrant Africans say that the American Africans can be rude and condescending. What is your opinion on the relationship in America between immigrant Africans um, and American Africans? Uh, honestly, I feel like I believe I've lived in America for 16 years. Serve. Uh, African-American long enough. I lived in Baltimore for about 11 years. I work with African-American women for years. So I've seen the way they react to us Africans, you know. And I believe the problem here is uh, just education. Like this, in, in the African community, for example, the older Africans, they don't understand where they at when they come here in America, they don't understand that drive a car, get a job that they make because of the struggle of the African American community. They see themselves as separated from the African American community because uh, uh, African culture is very different from African American uh, culture. 
So African American, uh, I'm sorry, African, older Africans, very uh, conservative and very uh, critical, like they, they judge African Americans a lot because they feel like the culture is too different. Things that they don't accept in the African community, they see that happening in the African American community. And that's the reason why they see themselves as separated. Now, us, the younger African, when I say younger African, I mean like from the early 20s to the 30s, we are a little more, uh, under, we understand the American community a little more because we communicate with them. We have friends that are African American, so we know, we know the struggle of Africa. We, we, we might not feel it the way they feel it, but at least we have information about the struggle of uh, African Americans. We know that it's thanks to them that we are able to be in this country as human beings. It's thanks to African American struggle and the fight that we are able to get a job and be a manager in a company and even be allowed to purchase a house or a land. We know that the younger generation. So uh, when, I, when I feel like African Americans feel some type of way about African, it's more because they probably had an uh, they probably had um, an experience with an older African. Can we are not like that? I know and me, we are not like that. We understand that, hey, we need to come together and, and you know, stand at, as one. We understand that. But the older generation, they don't understand that. And you can't really, like, blame them. To, you can't really, like, put it, put it on all Africans because in most community, the older generation are always very, how can I say, they are always the most racist in most community, the older generation, because they don't understand how the new world works. So I don't think the problem here is uh, Africans against African Americans, but I think the problem here is just older people that are unable to understand the younger generation. Got you, got you. Thank you for that in, in, input, my sister. You know, Thank you very much. I was going to say, uh, Africans and African people, when I say African people, I mean the Africans in Africa. It would be really hard for us to be on the same because you have to understand that Africans in Africa in like a lot of survival mode compared to to focus on eating and surviving and you know meeting their basic needs for for the most part yeah. so when an african person comes to america uh, oh community or oh, like ho how can we how can we uh improve the way police is interacting with black people in the community they're worried about how can i make money and eat and move back to my country and help my people. They don't have, they don't think about the same. They're not, they're not at that level yet to think about who oh, let's, let's come together. They're still trying to survive because over there we were colonized and the white man took everything. And most African country can't even print their own money. But when the white man came to Africa, they met with uh, the old indigenous and um, the old chief in African villages who could not read or write. And then they brought their own translators and they made us sign some treaties that are lasting 500 years, 200 years. So some African country right now owe taxes to European countries for 500 years. A lot of them signed those treaties. They couldn't even understand the language. They couldn't, so they, Africa is really, really like locked down behind and crippled by these by these uh, contracts you know what i mean and then so no matter how right. hard we try to fight there's always these contracts pay taxes can you imagine when you when you sell something in cameroon for example you pay 60 percent of taxes to france that's not even half you pay 60 percent of taxes to france now you got to pay also right. taxes to the country 
and you end up with like no money. Right. Like, no matter how much you fight hard to get out of the poverty cycle, it's very it's almost impossible because we have those contracts with the French. When 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 an African try to succeed in Africa, right. they are unable to do that. And when they come to America, they are they they thinking about they are on survival mode. They are on survival mode. So it's so seven dollar per hour to an African who just came from Africa, fresh from Africa. It's seven dollar per hour for, uh, per hour is enough to buy to buy an African. Per hour is enough to buy an African, and that's the reason why it's going to be really hard for Africans and at the same level. Why? Because we're still we're still way behind. Then then if if you think African Americans are behind, Africans are way way behind even even way more behind than, than african americans and they did that on purpose because they know that if africa mama. ever rise up rise up like all the blacks around the world all the blacks. i'm with you <laughs> you preaching mama you preaching go ahead and give me a close out statement i, I want to get a few more folks on sure here but i agree we, with what you're we, saying you, you know point. push away these hate between africans and african american and if ever if you ever have a bad experience with, with an African, as an African American, or if you ever have a bad experience as an African, uh, I'm sorry, if you ever have a bad experience as an African American with an African, or you ever have a bad experience as an African with an African American, just consider that to the wrong person. You know, like, like the real Africans know, uh, the real African know that we all share the same struggle target they always want to keep all of us down because if an african person rise up they know they know other black people are going to rise up so we're all in the same boat and we know that the real africans know that gotcha thank you, very thank much. you for the words queen i appreciate you all right Mom. Well said from an African sister. Well said from my Cameroonian African sister. So that shows you right there, you got African brothers and sisters from the continent here in America who sees themselves as part of the family. That's why it's Pan-Africanism, a parish, unify or die. One race, one kingdom, one family, brothers and sisters. RBG forever. The only flag flag you need is the red, black, and green flag. The only flag you need is the red, black, and green flag. The only flag you need is the red, black, and green. Hello, Dr. Umar. Well, I can see your face y'all gonna stop with these pictures I'm where sorry. you at i want to see you you can hear me i want to see you i can hear you, well, you i need to see you you can't see me because my camera is broke right now i'm not gonna lie everybody my camera got, is got a broke camera huh everybody can, got a broke camera you can see camera. me on my youtube channel on my podcast where you been all of that based at? i'm based in detroit michigan detroit talk to me princess so i agree with most of the things she was saying but i i see a lot of confused folks in the comments here saying oh we don't like africans and us african americans don't like you guys back no 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 the thing is well i'm speaking from my personal experiences how i look at it is you guys come to this country and of course looking for extra resources and like oh you guys have better opportunities here when you guys can actually g gather around yourselves in your own country, in your own African country, although we're all, you know, we're all one at the end of the day. But the problem is when you guys come here, they're going to automatically bless you guys way before they bless us. They're going to approve you guys for loans before they approve us for loans. And so you guys say, oh, we're, we're more further behind than you guys. It creates more problems when all you could have did was really stay in your community in your own country gather around create unity there and then build from that you can go from that 
you guys can do the same thing you guys claim to do here in this country in your own black country and that'll make it way more i feel like that'll make people around the world take us very serious because it's just all not, not it's just all a mess it's all a mess everybody is going against the immigrants now and it's not that we want to do that but you guys are taking resources that don't need to be it, it, it don't need to be like that it don't need to be let like me that. ask you a question queen let me let, let me let me ask you a question yes. according to some of the statistics i've seen recently there are approximately three million african immigrants in the united states mm -hmm. three million joe biden and kamala harris brought in 10 million migrants in four years or should i say most of them have come in four years most of those migrants were not african people so my question is why do we have so much smoke for the Af african immigrants but they are at the bottom of the list when it comes to those who have robbed us the most. In other words, I don't see that type of smoke for the Latin American migrants mm -hmm. that are being brought here. Mm -hmm. I don't see that kind of smoke for the rainbow gang mm -hmm. that has appropriated so much of the civil rights struggles of our ancestors for personal gain. I don't see that smoke for the feminists. I don't see that smoke for the Arabs, the East Indians, the Latinos, the Chinese. African immigrants have siphoned off the smallest portion right. of the American African struggle, but it seems like we always take issue with them and we ignore everybody else who has appropriated the African struggle more. What why do you think we have smoke for the African immigrant? No smoke for the Latinos, no smoke because, for the rainbow gang. A lot no of us smoke. are uneducated. A lot of us is our un is uneducated about that and i wasn't just pointing out just us africans i am pointing out the latinos the bermudians the bermudians and everyone all of all the islanders and all, i'm talking about all of the, Ven the venezuelans right, but, but, and we but, got the but again right but again they are the mi minority of the immigrants mm -hmm. african and when i say african i'm speaking of any african whether they from north central south right. america the caribbean europe africa just african right they are not the largest group of immigrants mm -hmm. they're one of the, the smallest groups of immigrants in fact southern european immigrants southern european white folk from the southern europe they are one of the largest bodies of immigrants who come here and get the social services that were originally intended for black people, but we rarely discuss them. And of course we know why, because so many black men are trying to make them wives. Mm -hmm. So they definitely don't want to, you know, uh, demonize them. But, you know, to me it's hypocritical to have so much smoke for 3 million African immigrants when you have all these other immigrants and other minority groups in the country. For example, if Kamala Harris becomes president, you're going to see an East Indian immigration wave to this country like you've never seen before. Right. And guess what? We're going to still be talking about African immigrants. Mm -hmm. Why are you talking about homosexuals have taken way more from us. Latinos have taken way more from us. Right. You see, uh, 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 the Ukrainians, the Afghani uh, refugees, these Latin migrants have taken way more from black people than the African Very immigrants. True. And I just think that if you want to be critical of them, shouldn't criticism be equally distributed? I totally like agree. I believe the African immigrants get way more criticism than they are entitled to. And then you have other groups. We won't even mention the homosexuals. We won't even mention the Latino. These are the groups that have taken more from the African-American struggle, but we will go right back to African immigrants and make them a scapegoat, you know, for siphoning off of services and benefits from black people that they have not taken advantage of as much as other people because their numbers are not as great as other people. And then the other point to that, and not to say that this is you per se, Queen, here's my biggest issue with people who blacks who always want to blame african immigrants and don't get me wrong i know some nasty african immigrants Same. 
who can't stand black people, want nothing to do with us, absolutely in love with Caucasians. Just because I'm a Pan-Africanist, I am not blind that you have Negro pins, you got Africans, you got all kind of stuff. You see, so I'm, I'm, I, I see clearly, believe me, I see it, but it's not most of them. And I know that the real African revolutionaries will never be allowed to come to this country anyway, because they know that they would organize with us. But here's my bigger issue. Isn't, don't you find it odd that we will criticize and condemn African immigrants in America, but we will eternally forgive and kiss the back side of Caucasians who have been responsible for our oppression for four centuries. So the people responsible for your oppression for four centuries get a permanent pass, permanent forgiveness, no smoke. Every time you see the Caucasian, you greet them with a smile. You're happy to be with them. You're marrying them. You're sending your kids to their schools. You're moving into their communities. These people are responsible for your enslavement, your degradation, your marginalization for four centuries, and it continues. We're in the fifth century now, four entire centuries, and we're five years into the fifth century. We have nothing but love for them, but the African immigrant, we got nothing but smoke for them. What do you think about that? I agree. I agree that a lot of people do take their anger out on the Africans, um, the Black Africans that come here and don't have as much smoke for white people that have put us in oppression and is the reason and the cause of so much mental health issues that we all deal with. We all deal with it, actually. But my thing is, I'm not just specifically having smoke with them. I'm just saying a lot of them do come here and forget the actual goal that we all need to be doing like don't be accepting all their free funds all this stuff or if you do make sure that you're putting it back into our communities don't go and like the young lady just you know the commute commu what is it Cam cameroon sister who were just on she was just stating that you know everybody will come to this country and then go back and then spend their money elsewhere and take it back elsewhere and build and it's like then we're not going to have as much here left you know let me ask you a question yeah and then i'm gonna let you run so i can get a few more folks on and great 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 dialogue by the way good sister i will be in ypsilanti michigan the first day of black history month in february i'll probably be back in detroit before then but i'll be in ypsilanti the first day of black history month let me let me hit you with this is the real problem the fact that african immigrants are not showing respect for the people who fought for the benefits that they benefit from? Is that the real issue? Or is the real issue that the American Af African community has allowed itself to remain financially and politically disorganized and weak? Yeah. Let me ask it another way. If we were organized without $2 trillion in spending power, hypothetically, let's say that the 50 million of us, if we were politically organized and uh, economically organize would we care about what little benefits african immigrants get at the expense of our ancestors struggle in this country do you think we would care as much if we had our financial and political shit together would we give a damn about a few african immigrant brothers and sisters coming and getting some grants and jobs and some food stamps and some housing would we care if we were financially and politically organized? What do you think? Well, that means we'll have some type of power and then we'll then be able to regulate. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so answer that question for me. Would, would, would we care? Would this be an no. issue if we had our shit together? No. So, exactly. yeah, you're right. so it the, does start the real that. problem yeah. then, right, right. the real mm -hmm. problem is not the right. immigrant. Right. The real problem is black people have done nothing for themselves as a group since Dr. King was murdered, and when other groups come and siphon off, it hurts us, not because they're siphoning off alone, but because we have stayed in the same place for 56 years. Mm -hmm. How do you expect not to get ran over when you have sat on your ass as a group? I'm not talking about individual achievements. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the group. 
when you have sat on your ass as a group for 60 years, ain't built a hospital, a school, a factory for 60 years, and now other groups are coming here and benefiting from your struggle. We should be so far beyond this. The fact that a $2 trillion people is worried about immigrants coming and getting social services that they fought for is insane to me. It's insane. Why am I worrying about keeping him from eating? I'm supposed to worry about building myself into a global black power structure. That's where the energy should be. In other words, and this is not you again, Queen, but I see us spending more attention on trying to pluck Africans off of the American African civil rights train, pluck them off, but we don't pluck off no gays, we don't pluck off no feminists, we don't pluck off no migrants, we don't pluck off no Asians, we don't pluck off nobody else, but we're gonna pluck all the African immigrant brothers and sisters off when that should not even be a focus. Right. Because we don't decide if they get the resources or not. The government decides if they get the resources or not. We don't have no say so. So rather than trying to keep them from getting something over which you have no control, although you fought for it, why not put your attention on building yourself into the next great black power structure in, 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 in Black Wall Street? I just believe we operate psychologically, good sister. We operate psychologically from a deficit perspective right. as opposed to a benefit perspective. Like, if you didn't know we were a true trillion dollar people, collectively speaking, because we do have poverty, let's be a, we have poverty, and wealth in Black America is also unequally distributed. We know that our celebrities have way more money than the rest of us put together. We, well, excuse me, that's not true, okay, but we do know our celebrities per capita have more wealth than the rest of us. So wealth amongst us is disproportionately, you know, it's uneven too, but at the same time, we do have it. Right. We do have, there's everyday sacrifices we could make and put that money elsewhere. We don't need to have the most expensive clothes. Black women don't need to spend all that money on their hair. Black men don't need to be buying all these Air Jordans and fashionable clothes. We don't need to keep doing all these cruises and vacations. and Like there's enough disposable income that we could redirect into some positive uh, investments if we gave a damn. Right. And I'm just tired of hearing about what the immigrants are taking. Listen, if I don't plan on being poor my whole life, why the hell do I care about what someone else is getting from poor people? Right. If I don't plan on being in the projects forever, why do I care there's other people moving into my project? Mm -hmm. The only reason why I care about other people moving into my project is I plan to stay there. And that's what bothers me about the American African when we talk about immigrants, black and non-black, African and non-African, coming here and taking what our ancestors fought for. They fought for that 60 years ago. Mm -hmm. They fought for that 60 years ago. You mean to tell me 60 years later, when your per capita income is tremendously higher than what it was in the days of Dr. King, 60 years later, you're still trying to keep people from getting benefits our ancestors fought for yeah. instead of building the institutions and systems that we need? Yeah. Why are we so, we have a poverty mindset. Yeah. As a people, we have a poverty mindset. Whether we're in poverty or not is irrelevant. We have an impoverished mindset. We're trying to protect something we don't even control yeah. as opposed to taking control over what we do have and that is our financial resources. So, I want to yeah. thank you for your call, sister. That was a very good conversation. Thank you, thank you for that. Call. For answering and me and you guys in the comments, I am not uneducated actually, don't, and I do not. Don't pay them no about. mind, sister. I got all kind of coons, <laughs> zest festers, rainbow gangers. Sure. Don't pay attention to my comments, please. Okay. I attract, I attract scum <laughs> in the comments. So you can't pay them no money. Yeah, okay. Well, you have a great <laughs> evening. You, you like too, both say melanated. Absolutely. Appreciate you, Queen. One well, love. Make sure you hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Make sure you hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Make sure you hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit your PayPal paypal.me slash fdmg academy i'm working on a couple under 30 year old black political conventions 
I'm working on a couple under 30 year old black political conventions. I want to see you at the Source of Knowledge Bookstore in Newark, New Jersey, September the 15th. I want to see you at HBCU Edward Waters College, September the 26th. I want to see you in Nat Turner Land for his solar eclipse birthday celebration, October the 2nd. I want to see you in Toronto, Canada, October 4th, 5th, and 6th. I want to see you in Dallas, Texas, October the 12th. Harriet Tubman Eclipse, October the 17th. I want to see you in England, the United Kingdom, October the 21st. I want to see you in Ghana, October 30th to November the 5th. Matt Turner Land, November the 11th. Sydney, Australia, November 16th and 17th. Sydney, Australia. We got the Dangerfield Newbie, Almost Eclipse, November the 17th. Atlantic City, New Jersey, November the 20th. Las Vegas, Nevada, November the 22nd. Brooklyn, New York, December the 1st. I'm not worrying about no moderators. If you're serious, you're not worrying about the comments, family. If you're serious, you're not worrying about the comments, family. Y'all not tapping in. When I tap y'all in, y'all not tapping in. 